naughty gnomes, cried Percy. He steamed away faster than before, all the way back to Lower Tidmouth Station. Pat, oil splashed everywhere. Worse was to follow. Help, cried George. Something snapped. He veered out of control, and Sir Topham Hatt landed in a muddy ditch close to where Thomas was taking on water. Bother! Bother! When Sir Handel and Peter Sam arrived, they found they had much to learn. What a small shed, grunted Sir Handel. This won't do at all. We're much too smart for this old shack. I think it's nice, said Peter Sam. Huh, replied Sir Handel. What's that rubbish? Percy, Percy, green and small, he's no use to us at all. Around the yards he'll puff and blow, but on the hills he's oh so slow. Be quiet. The twins now became excited. They were going to use the turntable for the first time. Bill went first. This is fun, he shrieked to Ben. He didn't want to move off at all. The foreman stopped the turntable. Please make way for the other engines, he ordered. Bill did so, but unfortunately the foreman had accidentally stopped the turntable in the wrong place. Bill was on the wrong track and there was Ben puffing directly toward him. The engines came to a grinding halt. They gazed grimly at each other. I was here first, said Bill, but you're in my way, protested Ben. We're out of hot air, shouted a voice. Ah! cried James. What's happening? Later that morning, George was at the level crossing. Huh, he said. You're Sir Handel, I suppose. Sir Handel was standing no nonsense. And you, I suppose, are George, yes. I've heard of you. And I've heard of you. You swank around with your steamroller wheels pretending you're as good as me. Actually, retorted Sir Handel, I'm better. Goodbye. Why? What did he do? He turned him into a generator. Did you say tell the fat controller? Asked Duck thoughtfully. There was a long silence. I propose, said Gordon, that Percy be our, um, disputation. Look, shrilled Oliver, look at Bulgy. He's a mean scarlet deceiver. Bulgy was wearing a large sign saying, Railway Bus. Yeah, boo snubs, he jeered as he roared away. So it stung James right back on the nose. whistled James. He had had enough. So had his fireman and driver. Ahoy there, Cranky, cried Salty. Where have you been, snapped Cranky. And a good day to you too, Captain. But they couldn't be everywhere, and everywhere they weren't, the trucks began again. Oh, well, there's no use at all. Tipsy, very clever. Says the he can manage us. That's the best joke ever. Clickety-clack, don't look back, dirty Percy's on our track. Bull crossing where Elizabeth, the quarry truck, waited with a farmer's prize bull. This time, Duncan whistled as loud and as long as he could. <coughs> said the bull. Stop that nonsense, Duncan, Elizabeth called. Duncan carried on cheerfully down the track and he blew so hard, his whistle shot off like a mighty rocket and landed out of sight. Diesel. He'd slipped out whilst no one was looking. He said goodbye to no one but left two things behind. A rather nasty smell and a battered bowler hat. Uh, 
Percy. No, no, wailed the empty trucks. It's Peter Sam. But it was no use. Hurrah, hurrah, roared the trucks. Peter Sam shut his eyes. We're just about to board Harold when it happened. What was that? cried Sir Topham Hatt. That's Tiger Moth, grumbled Harold. It's rude and flies much too low. So I can see. Please take us up, Harold, before there's another disturbance. Early one morning, Gordon's fire would not light. I don't know what's wrong, sighed the firelighter. Stupid bird, said Henry. Owls, mists, ghosts. Edward's going soft at the boiler. There's no mist. Duck felt his responsibility deeply and talked endlessly about it. You don't understand, Donald, how much the Fat Controller relies on me. Ach, I muttered Donald sleepily. I'm Great Western and I... Quack, quack, quack. What? Ye heard. Quack, quack, you go. Sounds like you're an egg laid. Now wheesht and let an engine sleep. Quack yourself, said Doc indignantly. As a result, he and his coaches often overran the platform. Thomas found this most embarrassing. Gradually, his driver and fireman learned to be extra careful. Just like this, he boasted. I suffer dreadfully and no one cares. Rubbish, Henry, snorted James. You don't work hard enough. <laughs>